Now to Pakistan, where they're celebrating Independence Day. It's been 62 years since the creation of the state, scarred by intermittent military rule, assassination and rampant corruption. Add to that a crippled economy, a tribal patchwork, a Taliban insurgency, a brooding neighbor to the east and a fractures one to the west. And it's not surprising that Pakistan's birthday is marked by some soul searching. So what do its people think of the battle being fought for the country's future? All again reports from Islamabad. Pakistan at 62, a nation in need of peace, security and an economic miracle. In the back streets, they're weary of poverty and power cuts, of rushing for water when the electricity is on. This Independence Day, there's nothing to celebrate, says Mohammad Tariq, in business here for more than 30 years. I've never seen things so bad. We sit idle all day with no customers. Inflation is breaking everyone's back. But on the security front, there's a sense of progress. Some feel safer on the streets since the government took on the Taliban in earnest. It has made a difference. I mean, there's no denying that. You're in control now. Whether you are or not, that's a separate issue. And that's the big unknown. Have the Taliban in Pakistan been seriously weakened? The government believes their leader was killed last week and warns Al-Qaeda wants to choose his successor. They will definitely try to put somebody who is in their control and who can listen to them more. And uh, therefore, we, we understand that there could be a situation uh, which is a bit worrying because Al-Qaeda is very much present and they would like to install somebody uh, of their own. But in downtown Islamabad, the revelers are out. A show of hope, perhaps, and of resilience. For many Pakistanis, this is a rare moment. A chance to forget the bloodshed of the past year and the dangers of tomorrow. Orla Giran, BBC News, Islamabad. In Pakistan, the Taliban say they've appointed a new leader to replace Baitullah Mesud, whom the U.S. claimed to have killed in an airstrike earlier this month. The militant group still deny Mesud is dead, but say he's seriously ill, and so have chosen a close associate of his, Haikimullah Mesud, to take his place. Orla Garin reports from Islamabad. The new face of Pakistan's Taliban, Haikimullah Mesud, described as ruthless and rash. After rumors of shootouts and power struggles, he's been named as leader. His predecessor, Baitullah Masood, focused on Pakistan. He's accused of killing hundreds at home. But Hakimullah may have ambitions on both sides of the border. And experts warn he'll be in a hurry to cause carnage, to show he's in command. He'll be far more aggressive in the initial stages to prove uh, his uh, leadership. He can be a great danger during this uh, period uh, to the NATO, US and uh, British troops and also uh, be a great danger to Pakistan. The authorities here have been attempting to write off the Taliban, claiming the killing of Betullah Masood was a fatal blow. The Taliban still maintain that he's alive, but seriously ill. Either way, it seems his young aide, Haki Mullah, is now emerging from his shadow to take up the Taliban leadership, chosen unanimously by senior commanders, and it's believed by Al-Qaeda. Tonight there will be concerns in London and Washington about what all this may mean. Pakistan's Taliban could become an even greater threat to Western troops in Afghanistan. But that will depend on whether or not the militants unite behind their new leader. The next few months will be crucial. Orla Giran, BBC News, Islamabad. In a brutal end to a day of Ramadan fasting on Pakistan's border with Afghanistan, a suicide bomb attack has killed at least 18 people. Police said the bomber approached on foot at sunset as security guards were celebrating the end of their Ramadan fast. The attack took place in the Khyber Pass in the country's northwestern tribal region. Well, our correspondent Orla Guerin has been telling us more about the significance of the timing of this attack. Well, this is the first big bombing we've had since the killing of the Taliban leader, Betullah Masood, earlier this month. Now, at this stage, we don't know if the two events are connected. We haven't yet had a claim of responsibility. But certainly security officials had been on alert, fearing that the Taliban would try to strike back. 
we do know that this is an area, the Khyber Pass and the border region where the Taliban have attacked in the past. In fact, the new Taliban leader, Haki Mullah, more or less made his name attacking NATO convoys, making their way through the pass, carrying essential supplies to Afghanistan. So there will certainly be a lot of concern here that this could be an attack by the Taliban, could be a signal that they are in fact regrouping rather than, as the government has claimed, uh, falling apart in disarray. The latest death toll we have is 22 and there is an unconfirmed report that the bomber was in fact a teenage boy who walked towards the security guards carrying a soft drink and then, de then detonated the bomb causing this massive blast which completely destroyed the checkpoint. Every stone of the Khyber Pass has been soaked in blood. That's a century-old description of the ancient trade route and battleground, but it could have been spoken today. The passage between Pakistan and Afghanistan is at the heart of the fight with the Taliban. Just yesterday, a suicide bomber killed 22 Pakistani police officers there. Meeting the British Prime Minister in London today, Pakistan's president insisted his forces will prevail. Our correspondent, Ola Guerin, has been to the Khyber Pass to see if he's right to be confident. The men of the Khyber Pass coming to bury their dead. Border guards who sat down to their evening meal and were joined by a suicide bomber. Militants linked to the Taliban claimed responsibility. This was the first big attack since the killing of their leader earlier this month. They've robbed these boys of their fathers and reminded Pakistanis what they can do. It was congested and tense when we filmed the exact spot earlier this week. The Khyber Pass is a key artery for NATO supply convoys and it's a favourite target for the new Taliban leader, Haki Mullah. He made his name bombing the convoys. The fear is he could renew his attacks and send more fighters across the border. Commanders here told us they can't stop them. From the militant point of view, this remote frontier isn't a border, it's a thoroughfare. Britain's deeply concerned, but Pakistan claims it's got the Taliban and Al-Qaeda on the run. I have warned them. They have no room in Pakistan. We will not tolerate them. And moreover, the local population is participating in this war and they are with the government to flush them out. But we followed the Taliban trail to a place called Barra. Commanders told us the militants have moved in and are putting up resistance. There was fierce fighting here recently. Troops targeted two militant hideouts. The militants fought back, more than a hundred of them, and the battle raged for about eight hours. It's believed that senior Taliban leaders are among those who found refuge here after they were flushed out elsewhere. It was after SWAT operation that uh, they started coming to this in bigger number. And um, at the moment there are around 300 uh, miscreants in this area, Taliban. This is a serious concern and uh, they may reorganize in this area. So we will not allow them. Pakistan has been hunting the militants as never before, but some worry it has declared victory far too soon. Orla Giran, BBC News, in the Khyber Pass. Across the border in Afghanistan, another US soldier was killed by a roadside bomb today, and an American reporter was wounded in a separate explosion. At least 14 policemen have been killed after a suicide bomb attack in Pakistan's northwestern Swat Valley. Many more people have been injured. The blast occurred as police recruits were being trained at the station in the town of Mingara. The attack is said to be one of the largest in the Swat Valley since the end of a Pakistani army offensive against Taliban militants. We're joined now by Orla Garin in Islamabad. Orla, it was only uh, a few weeks ago that the Pakistani army were saying we had cleared nearly, nearly every single one of those militants. Uh, this is a big blow for them. Well, yes, the army had been claiming only last month that the Swat Valley and surrounding areas were 99% cleared of militants. Uh, that claim had been echoed by the government. Uh, the Prime Minister, Yusuf Razav Ghilani, going as far as to say that extremists had been eliminated. On the basis of those claims, the displaced people, up to two million of them, uh, had been instructed to go home. There was a government-led and financed campaign to get people out of the displaced camps and back into the Swat Valley. 
Valley on the basis that normal life could resume and they would be protected. Now, I have to say that many of those who returned went back with a great deal of anxiety. We joined some of them on their journey. They were tremendously concerned that the militants hadn't been destroyed and had simply been dispersed and maybe driven to the high ground. And commanders in the valley admitted to us at that time that, that, that they did believe there were pockets of Taliban who were on the high ground. The big concern, of course, was that the leaders had not been found. And while they remain free, uh, many will be anxious about their ability to reorganize but today's attack is the biggest that has taken place uh, since the army took control. We're told that the bomber disguised himself as a recruit and joined others at a training, uh, at a training session, uh, killing, we're told, about 14 uh, police recruits. Ola Guerin in Islamabad, thank you.